Vice President Dick Cheney told Fox News last year that he had proof that torture works. His call to declassify certain CIA memos would give the American people, he said, a chance to see what we obtained and what we learned and how good the intelligence was. As we've already seen, that proof proven false by a Justice Department report. The reaction of Colonel Lawrence Wilkerson, the Chief of Staff to Secretary of State Colin Powell, is probably more worthy of acknowledgement than that of almost anyone we're likely to hear from in public. He is a day after the revelation still disgusted. He joins us presently. You will recall that a review from the DOJ's Office of Professional Responsibility disproving Mr. Cheney's assertion that the torture of high-level detainees had helped prevent terrorist attacks and save lives. A classified CIA memo that Mr. Cheney insisted would affirm he and President Bush were right to torture turned out to be wrong. According to the report, that CIA memo cited by Cheney contained plainly inaccurate information, specifically a significantly misstated timeline of events pertaining to the torture of al-Qaeda operative Abu Zubaydah. The CIA memo had claimed that information interrogated out of Zubaydah led to the arrest of dirty bomb plotter Jose Padilla nine months later, but the memo got the date of Padilla's arrest wrong. It took place not nine months after the torture, but three months before the torture. As Greg Sargent's blog, The Plum Line, also points out, the OPR report substantiates claims made by former FBI interrogator Ali Soufan. Soufan has stated he acquired critical information from Zubaida through non-enhanced interrogation methods. Newsweek's Michael Isikoff reporting the memo also left out references to another CIA detainee, Ibn al-Sheikh al-Libi. The OPR report saying that al-Libi provided false information about al-Qaeda's supposed but non-existent ties to Iraq uh, to stop his interrogators from abusing him any further. As promised, here is Colonel Lawrence Wilkerson, currently the Pamela Harriman Visiting Professor at the College of William and Mary, and formerly the Chief of Staff to then Secretary of State Powell. Much thanks for your time tonight, sir. Thank you, Keith. By way of foreshadowing, I describe your reaction to the inaccuracy of that memo as disgusted. Forgive my presumptuousness in doing so, but is that a fair assessment? That's a fair assessment. Let me also say, Keith, that if, if your listeners want to tune in by Google or whatever to the most powerful refutation of Vice President Dick Cheney's comments with regard to the Obama administration or comments about torture, waterboarding, Guantanamo, Tune in to the uh, Colin Powell interview on Face the Nation on Sunday, and then to David Petraeus on Meet the Press on Sunday. Those two individuals, both general officers, one a former Secretary of State, refute everything Dick Cheney has been saying with regard to Obama's administration being less powerful with, mm -hmm. the, with regard to terrorism, and with regard to all these uh, heinous methods and in, uh, enhanced interrogation actually working. Give me context for this, because you were there, uh, what Cheney meant to the whole concept of enhanced interrogation, as they phrased it, and what this erroneous memo meant to Cheney's role in that. Well, I'm convinced that David Addington in Cheney's office was the brainchild of what John Yu, J. Bybee, Douglas Fyth, uh, Jim Haynes over at Defense, OSD General Counsel, all wound up producing. But here's what you've discovered, what the memo, I think, corroborates. What I suspected all along was that they were doing this sort of thing, this enhanced interrogation, this torture, to people long before the legal opinion was ever asked for and thus rendered by Bybee and you and others at OCL and the Department of Justice. So I think this corroborates that as early as May, possibly in 2002, mm. they were actually using these techniques. And then they went to justice and said, we've got cold feet. How about giving us legal justification? Which makes what you and Bybee and others did even more heinous in my view. Yeah, certainly, because that's an option at minimum because Mr. Cheney never said uh, this will prove that the torture that we supposedly did legally worked. He just said the enhanced interrogation. He never, hey, there were no legal niceties in his explanation, were there? Precisely. Uh, how does this memo story explain or affect Mr. Cheney's spokesman uh, status as, as essentially spokesman for those people who, as you referred to earlier, insist the current administration is not doing a good enough job protecting America as the previous one did. I tell you, Keith, I, I, I listen to social anthropologists, political anthropologists, others who tell me there are 11 million roughly kooks in America. Hmm. It's not going to do anything for them. But I do hope the people who may be reasonable reasonably sane citizens who are teetering on the line between believing that torture works, Jack Bauer in 24 is a, is, is a realistic repu, uh, representation, for example, and the fact that America's values simply don't support this, even if it did work, 
and I, I'll be one to tell you that it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope that they teeter the other way. Um, I looked at some polls today that said 53 percent of the American people actually still believe that torture in some circumstances is justified. It is never justified. It is debilitating, it is injurious, it damages our reputation, it damages our very soul. We should not be torturing people, and I'm very happy that this administration has banned it officially. Lastly, back to the previous administration, does this one little memo earn a place alongside, say, the madness of curveball or the 16 words in the State of the Union as that small collection of the pivotal lies of the years 2001 through 2008? When you were leading into this, I couldn't help but think of that, Keith, because mm -hmm. I thought about my time at the CIA when Secretary Powell was getting ready to throw everything out of his U.N. presentation about terrorists and about contacts with terrorists in Baghdad. And all of a sudden, Mr. Tennant, the director of the CIA, identified Sheikh al-Libi as a high-level al-Qaeda operative who Powell later cited in his testimony. And that swayed Powell to continue to insist in that presentation that there were terrorist contacts between Saddam Hussein and al-Qaeda, and there were not. One of the more significant events of that time, sadly. Colonel Lawrence Wilkerson, former State Department Chief of Staff. As always, Colonel, great thanks for your time. Thank you, Keith. A quick update on the former Vice President's health now. Mr. Cheney will spend another night at George Washington University in D.C., further testing revealing the chest pains he experienced yesterday were, quote, evidence of a mild heart attack, according to a spokesman. This is Mr. Cheney's fifth 69-year-old undergoing a stress test and heart catheterization. An aide to Mr. Cheney says the former Vice President is feeling good and is expected to be discharged the next day or two.